So after getting sidetracked for a couple of days doing that live engine build with Lunar Outlaw uh, and John Wilburn, and our buddy Al Castillo who jumped in there and lent a hand too, uh, we're finally back on our daily driver project. So the next phase here, we, you know, if you're, if you're following along, we've already done the short block, it's sitting in the car, and now we've got to do the heads. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through, all right, here's the thing that you have to understand. The biggest gains you're going to find in any performance uh, application, and whether it's for efficiency or, or, or just horsepower, drag expert performance, doesn't make any difference, is getting atmosphere into and out of the engine. Like, that's the essence of it. You know, getting a lid is important, right, of course. But it has to get in and it has to get out and it has to get in cleanly. The fuel and air mixture have to get in there atomized and ready to light. And the key, the, the, like, like, like the key to the kingdom with this is the cylinder head. Now, the idea of porting cylinder heads can seem a little intimidating if you're not well versed in it. But the bottom line is that you can make tremendous performance improvements, especially on these older castings, with just very basic hand tools. You don't need a flow bench, you don't need anything exotic. You can do it all by hand. What's going on, man? Hey, what? So, first things first, uh, this is what you need, right? This is a cheap Harbor Freight die grinder. Right? Now, I mean, Harbor Freight tools are known to be throwaways. I've done at least, I don't know, six or seven sets of heads with this thing. It's still going strong. And they even come with extra brushes. So when the brushes, you know, go away on you, you pop a new set in and you go. Uh, this is about $60. Your expensive part is this. This is your carbide burr. Now, be, be forewarned. You can find these things on eBay. Uh, for cheap, like you can get a, a whole set, like an assortment of them for like 50 bucks. And, but listen to me, they're bonded right here in such a way that they come apart. They're not intended for heavy use, and this would be considered heavy use. Uh, and when these things come off, they come off like bullets. I buy these at Fastenal. Uh, this, if you can only afford one of these, they're about 50, 50, between like 50 and 60 dollars each. If you can only afford one, Get one that's shaped like this because this will give you the most uh, uh, options as far as moving around goes. If you can afford a whole assortment of them, man, go for it. You know, the, the, obviously, the more options you have, the more efficient the job you can do. But if you can only afford one, that's what you'll want. So, those are the items you need. And this is the object of the work. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, we're going to do one cylinder here. Uh, we'll cover the intake port, the intake bowl, then we'll go to the exhaust bowl, and then the exhaust port. And this is all fairly universal. The important thing you got to remember about this is that modern cars, the newer castings, already have most of this stuff done in the production process. But when you go back and you're using cylinder heads from let's say the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the things that you're going to find on this head that I'm going to show you in this head are going to be common to everything. It doesn't matter if it's a straight 8 Buick or, or, or you know, a, a, a 318, 360 Chrysler like this or a Ford. They all have essentially the same basic flaws. And this is how you fix them all. So let's start with the intake side. Now, as you know, we're using an SP2P intake manifold on this build. And that intake manifold specifically has a smaller port than the port that's being used, or, you know, the standard port in the head. Now normally what we would do, and what I would recommend you doing, especially if you're porting for performance, is gasket match. And the way you gasket match is, all you do is you just take the intake manifold gasket, fit it in place, paint over the surface, and wherever you see paint here around the, the edges of the, uh, the intake port, you just want to grind those open. And, and, and match that. But in our case, because we're already starting with an intake port that's deliberate in manifold, that's deliberately smaller than this in the name of velocity, we're not going to gasket match this. All we're going to do is smooth this entry port. Now when I say smooth it, if you run your hand in here, you're going to feel all sorts of little, uh, you know, casting flaws. Little things, ridges that pop up, like for instance, here's one right here, okay? And uh, let's see if we can get a little bit further in there. Actually, you know what? This port really isn't that bad. 
but you'll find sharp edges like for instance this is a sharp edge right here uh, and as you go inside you'll feel little bumps and whatnot don't worry so much about texture worry about things that aren't uh, part of the smooth casting so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dress this port out and I'll show you the result and point out what I did with it all right so here we go all right so this will take a minute So you see on this head right here, I'm going to go a little bit more on this, but you can see on this, on this particular head, there is a little bit of an intrusion here from the push rod boss. And what you want to do is you want to get rid of things like this, where it dips down and behind it, you want to smooth that transition so that nothing can puddle up or fall out of atomization in this zone. But you see, all I'm doing here is just cleaning up the floor, I'm cleaning up the corners, right? And I mean, that's really essentially it. There's not much to this. And if you follow these basic guidelines of, of just removing, you know, the, the, the obvious inconsistencies and things that you can run your finger over and feel the difference, if you just limit yourself to that, you really don't have any worry about grinding through or finding any thin spots or, or wrecking your casting. So that's the intake port. The bowl is really important. So. Working on the same cylinder, we find right away, immediately, I look inside the port and here, come here. Can you see this? This is a major piece of casting slag that's just there. Now what, what will happen is fuel will puddle, it'll come out of atomization against this sharp ridge here and that leads to uneven atomization. You're not getting full atomization into the chamber. So what you want to do is you want to identify things like this. That's a sharp edge. You want to take that down. There's this sharp edge right here you want to take down. This guide. You can take any sharp edges that you see in there you want to take down. And then also, and this is important, now pay attention. Here's the valve seat, okay? And then look at the area directly underneath the valve seat and you'll see an overhang here. The seat is completely round, right? But the area behind it isn't. Here it intrudes into the, into the direct flow here and here it's actually pretty smooth. And if you go around the head, right here you can find where it's undercut. So the, the, this section of the bowl is underneath this ridge. What you want to do is you want to take this whole area down and blend this right to the seat. And you got to be careful when you do this because if you slip and you get into the seat, you know, it's a trip to the machine shop. So you want to take your time. You want to be very careful with this and, you know, just blend. Bring it right back to the edge of the seat and stop and make this entire thing round. And so I'm going to do that and we'll come right back. All right, so you see what I did here now is I narrowed the top of the stem a little bit and I broke that sharp edge all the way around. And I also cleaned this area right here between the, uh, the stem and the, the, the ball and she's blended in here. 
not, you know, again, you don't have to go crazy, you don't have to dig in, you're not going to get big results if you just hog everything out. You want to contour it, okay? And then you see here now where we cleaned up, we brought the, uh, the whole bowl right to the edge of the seat, and it's pretty uniform all the way around. And you do that so that as, as the mixture is coming through the valve, it's coming through in a uniform way. So that right there, I'm, I'm telling you, like the, you will feel the difference. This is the stuff that separates the men from the boys. You don't have to go crazy. And it doesn't have to be pretty perfect polish like you see you know, a professional porter does. Uh, just get it to where it's smooth. Don't worry about it having like this mirror-like finish or anything like that. And some texture is good. Yeah, the, the golf ball effect. You want texture, but you don't want irregularities. Okay, so now we move on to the exhaust bowl. And the exhaust, same exact situation as the intake. Look at how far, so here's the seat, and look at how far the bowl extends into the seat area. So essentially this area right here isn't going to flow anything until the valve is probably a good 50 to 100 thousandths off its seat. So by taking this area down, you're increasing the, 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 the amount of gas that can get through this opening at low valve lifts. So what you're doing is you're, you're extending the duration of, of the, you know, the active duration of the valve being open. So I'm going to clean this one up and I'll show you what I did here and, and why. Okay, so we got our exhaust bowl cleaned up. Now by comparison's sake, you can look at this one right here. And you can see this rusted area is actually intruding into the seat, in, up into the seat area. So we've removed this from here. So you see we blended it right to the edge of the seat. So anything that comes past this edge of the seat has a clear shot at the bowl. Now also what we did was we did a lot of what we call, what we call line of sight porting. So in other words, like where you can see. The exhaust has to follow the path that you can see. So you want to do all of your, your, your blending in that direction. So here you can see we took the sharp edge, this ledge down. We narrowed the guide a little bit and we blended from here. And as we were taking metal away from this area, we were also working our grinder down into the area of the direction of flow. So basically, you're just creating a path. You're, you're creating the path of least resistance for that exhaust gas to get through. All right, and the last part is gonna be the exhaust port itself. So, what we have here is classic. This is pretty much exactly what you're gonna find and why you need to do this stuff. Look at this section right here. That is not carbon. That's actual steel. Look, look how deep that is. Can you see that? That's about a, yeah, I think you can. That's about a quarter of an inch. There's a ledge of about a quarter of an inch that comes to here and boom, it just stops. Um, that's okay. And this is kind of okay. But this right here is exactly the reason why you need to do this sort of thing if you're looking to get actual performance out of your car. So I'm going to cut this away and contour this port and show you why we did this. So you can see the difference here. We took out this whole section that was intruding in there. Uh, we cleaned. We cleaned up the walls. We we didn't make the port any larger. All we did was go around and make sure that it was uniform to its intended casting shape, right? So we had all sorts of irregularities. Like here, let's come to this one, and you've got the same situation. So here's some overhang over here. Here's a ridge over here. Uh, you see the the irregularity here. Okay, so all we did was take this port and bring it to its intended casting shape, right? And also, very important when you're doing any type of exhaust porting, uh, whenever you've got a step, like here, we're talking about the end of the port where it, it flows into this, 
you want to flute the edges of it, meaning that you want to flare them out or just dress them out slightly. And that reduces drag as the exhaust gas is coming through and heading into the, the header tube. So that's pretty much it. Your golden rules is stay away from the floor, right? Everything is done on the, on the walls and, and the, uh, the, the roof of the port. Floors, only very, very few engines benefit from any work done on the floors of the port. If you find any obvious irregularities there, yeah, take them out, but don't go crazy like that. If you stick with just this basic plan, which is only cleaning up imperfections and making things true to the way they're supposed to be, as opposed to how they're mass cast, you can't go wrong. You're not going to grind through anything. You're not going to do any damage. You'll be fine. Just take your time. Your biggest danger in doing something like this is slipping and taking out the seat. But that right there, that's what separates the men from the boys. It's the little details like that that add up as you go through the entire engine. It's those little details like that that add up and actually make producible, usable power and results. That's it. A lot more of this to go. I'll see you tomorrow.